Hello everybody and welcome to this week's video. I have decided to share with you how I take a pattern from a finished garment. I mentioned this in my thrift video last week and a number of you said that you wanted to see it so you are welcome. Uh, there was something I wanted to touch on before we jumped into the tutorial and that was where I've come from and why I started doing this technique. I studied at the West Australian Academy of Performing Arts uh, in a costume background, studying costume construction. So often we would have to reproduce garments that were already made because um, there were multiple cast members, uh, the, the costume was getting blood on it, just a number of different reasons. So that's how I learned this technique. Um, I use it for a very different reason today. I mainly when I do this, it's because I am intrigued and I want to learn, learn about the garment. I want to learn about drafting. I want to learn about different techniques. For me, it's a technique thing, um, growing myself as a seamstress and becoming a better sewer as a whole, learning new techniques. Um, it costs a lot of money to study at university, but there's a lot you can do by sampling techniques that you see in shops um, to teach yourself. So that's what this video is about. That's why I loved YouTube and what I want my channel to be about. A place for you to come and grow yourself as a seamstress and a person who is interested in sewing so you can just be kick ass at it. Uh, I also did want to mention some other things. I know this is like playing with fire, bringing it up, but it is a touchy subject that is close to my heart because I see it happen way too often and it is not okay uh, when people rip off designers. You see it happening so much more now and I don't know if that's just because I am hyper aware of it because of what I'm doing, but it's just happening way too often and that's definitely not what I'm encouraging here. Um, I just want to share with you so you can learn new techniques, but stealing and reproducing a, a pattern and then a dress and selling it commercially is not okay. I There's a, a brand over in Sydney called Hopeless Lingerie. They sell lingerie. Uh, the women who work there work for the owner in her house, in her studio. They get paid Australian um, wages, which is like 24, 25, 26 dollars an hour. Um, thus, the garment costs what it does at the end. Uh, larger companies come along who have contacts in China, Bali, India, and manufacture, rip off, manufacture the same designs and sell them at a fraction of the price because they are getting people to manufacture in unethical and non-fair trade environments, which is a whole other conversation that I'm not even gonna delve into now. Totally breaks my heart. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to put that out there and say, copying a design and reproducing it and selling it and calling it your own, it's not okay and not what this video is about. But if you're like me and you love sewing, you love making stuff for yourself um, and commercially, but you just want to become a better seamstress, I cannot tell you the number of times I've dragged friends into like Miss Selfridges or flagship stores. Um, uh, where did I go? Dolce & Gabbana, the flagship store on Fifth Ave. That was sensational. Um, Vivian Westwood in Los Angeles and just trying on as much as I could and taking photos of everything and coming home and sampling the techniques. How did they bind that? How did they bone that? Like, what did they do with the edge there? Oh my gosh, they cut that on the bias. Makes sense. It gives a garment more give where you need it in the side. Uh, those are just the little things that I've been doing for years and have helped me become the seamstress that I am today. And that's what this video is about. I feel like I've said that a million times. I'm going to be quiet. We're just going to jump into the tutorial. It's super quick, super easy, and I hope you enjoy. This is the paper that I use most of the time when I'm drafting. Um, it's just the paper I'm used to working with. It is the paper you get from Ikea, so it's totally easily attainable. If you can't get your hands or you can't get close to an Ikea, you can always use baking paper or newspaper, just tape it up. Um, but you will need paper of some kind that is a long length for you to take the pattern. Obviously a pencil and a tape measure. These two things are probably the only things that might be an issue if you're not a hardcore seamstress like myself. A French curve, however, you could always print off 
a French curve, an image of a French curve and cut it out in card and then you would have a French curve. Um, these things are amazing. I have two. One has seam allowance on it and this one doesn't but they're both great for doing like neck and armhole shaping you'll see in the video. This guy here, oh my gosh, I don't even know what to call it. A wheel, a tailor's wheel, a chalk wheel, a wheel. It's just basically a really spiky wheel. Um, and this is what we use to trace over the seams. And this is the way that we can take the pattern without having to cut it up. Once the paper is prepared and ready to go, generally speaking, I always tape the paper down so I know it isn't going to move. We want to start by picking one panel that we're gonna take the pattern from first. So I'm gonna work with the center front pattern and to get this prepared and ready for us to take the pattern, essentially we want to recreate the way that they would have cut the pattern. So I know that they would have cut the center front pattern on the folds. So I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm folding the center front pattern in half and working from my under side scenes right the way down to my hem as you can see me doing here and this just means that everything is going to line up um, nothing's going to be wonky and that's the key here you need to make sure that everything is flat and smooth and in line with one another so basically now we just want to line up the center front fold of the garment with what we've decided our center front line of the pattern to be. As you can see, I'm using the raw edge of the paper. That's going to be my center front line and I'm just smoothing everything out with the garment on top, making sure that nothing is sitting wonky or at a weird angle and I'm pinning it in place. Uh, you don't really want anything to move in this process. And sometimes you can't lay a pattern out completely flat like this. Sometimes you have to work in sections like the waist up and then the waist down but I'm able to pin it all out nice and flat and then I come back in with my pencil and trace around the outside. Now obviously I can't trace with a pencil through the side seams or any um, darts or seams that paneling that's in the actual garment so this is where the wheel comes in handy. So what I'm doing here with the wheel is wheeling through the garment right the way down into the paper. Don't worry it doesn't um, damage the garment at all. Um, um, people use this tailor's wheel uh, to like transfer chalk onto garments before they're even made. So it's definitely something that is garment friendly, do not worry. Um, and then I'm tracing the hem off here and removing all the pins. And now essentially we have transferred the center front pattern onto our paper. So this is when you want to come back in with your French curve and the same pencil and just trace around the lines that you just marked down on the paper. Uh, this is where you can take the opportunity to even things out. The first line that you drew is going to be really dodgy, um, really faint and not perfect. So using our French curve and um, evening everything out. This is also the point where you can alter the pattern. So I would recommend throwing the garment that you're taking the pattern from back on and have Having a look, maybe deciding, oh, I want to let the hip out, I want to take it in, it's a little bit big at the waist here, oh, I don't like the keyhole, I'm going to get rid of it. This is when you alter the pattern. Um, and like you can see me using here, the lines aren't always going to be perfect and straight. So use your initiative and alter the pattern to fit you. And then I'm coming back in with that French, other French curve I was telling you about that has the seam allowance. So it has a one centimeter seam allowance or a 0.5. I love to work in a one centimeter seam allowance. It's just what I'm used to. Um, so yep, go ahead and do that. And then that's the center front pattern finished. But at this stage, you need to mark in all of your notches your grain lines and what pattern piece it is. I know you're thinking like, oh, I'll remember that this is the center front because it's got a keyhole. But trust me, if you leave it for a week and come back, you won't remember which is which. So definitely remember to mark that it's the center front, that it's cut on the fold, where the grain line is. This garment's cut on the bias. So the center front line is cut on the bias, not the straight. Um, how much seam allowance there is. And then generally I will measure the garment at this point in time. So I know that the bust is um, this big, the waist is this big and the hip is this big. Let me know if any of you guys are interested in me doing another video about a trickier garment, taking things like a dart um, and transferring that from a finished garment into a pattern. Obviously, it's much trickier. Uh, so, yeah, I guess if this video is received well and you guys are interested in learning more about 
finished garments and taking patterns, then yeah, I will definitely look into doing it. But this is the finished pattern now. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, I probably will not do the keyhole cutout in the front if I am to make it. And another thing to note is make sure you write down um, what kind of fabric the garment was originally made in because if I was to cut this out of say a heavy drill it would sit completely different to how the synthetic satin silk um, looked. So yeah just keep that in mind when you are buying fabric to recreate a garment it has to be similar in some kind of way. Don't worry I am glad to see voiceover made gone just as much as you are. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, found it useful because I didn't know how to do this technique until someone taught me and I always thought you had to cut the garment up, which is not the case. Um, I might see if I can find a link to this little guy um, so I can post him there. I'm pretty sure I got it from America. Um, but yes, that is it. If you guys are enjoying the content and you haven't subscribed already, then please do. I'm posting vlogs and tutorials and I'm absolutely loving it. Posting once a week for you guys. So yeah, leave a comment down below, down below, down below, and let me know if there's any content you're interested in seeing. And if I like it, I will do it. Uh, that's it. I hope you guys are happy and well, and I will see you next week. Goodbye. Psych! I'm still here! One last thing before I go, um, let me know if you guys want me to upload this pattern to my WordPress blog so that you guys can make the pattern yourself for this exact dress. <sighs> Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Leave a comment down below and let me know if you want me to post this pattern on my blog so you can draft it yourself. Okay? Cool. Now I'm really going. Bye.